Ask any university professor, what is the point of university? And I think most will land on getting a degree. You'll get some that will talk about becoming a more rounded individual, more rounded graduate in your chosen field, but most will pick something along the lines of the academics. But are your academics the most important thing at university? While they are undoubtedly an important thing at university, I would argue that they are not the most important thing. You may then be wondering what is the most important thing at university and if you think I'm going to say the sesh I'm going to have to slightly disappoint you there. You'll understand why I'm saying slightly but I'm not just saying it's all party. What I see as the most important thing at university is everything that happens around your degree. The transferable skills that you'll develop, the people that you'll meet, the experiences you have around your degree, the personal development that happens for you over that three, four or five years that you spend at university. These things come from a variety of places, from running societies, from competing in and organising sports clubs, from your various different social pursuits, whether that's going out clubbing or taking part in a music group or going to the book club. Through these vital parts of university life, of normal life itself, you'll develop organisational skills, leadership skills, better time management, You'll become more adaptable, you'll gain experience running events, both big events like balls and the smaller, vital social events that will happen every week throughout your university degree. And through all of this, you'll meet people, countless people from all walks of life, different cultures, different socioeconomic backgrounds, different perspectives, different subjects. And as much as I hate the word networking, Naturally, you'll build up your own network of the people you meet through your lectures, yes, but also through your societies, your sports clubs, socialising, people you just meet because they know somebody else you know. And almost all of this happens outside of a lecture theatre, a tutorial room or a library. Now you might be wondering how I can be saying that this is more important than academics, more important than getting that degree you're working so hard for and in a lot of cases paying so much money for? It's a reasonable question, but let me counter it with another one. Life doesn't end with you walking across that stage at graduation. You have a whole world beyond that, decades more of a life. In this increasingly interconnected, international and competitive job market that we're all graduating into, how do you stand out from everyone else who has the same degree as you? Yes, you've soaked up loads of facts during your degree, you've developed a load of interesting, useful skills directly related to your degree, but so has every other graduate with your degree title. What makes you different? What is your value at? With that in mind, let's look at my time at St Andrews University, the things that I did alongside my studies. I'm not saying I know everything, but this illustrates my point quite well. I'm also going to preface this with saying that I am very privileged to have been able to do all of this stuff alongside my course. I appreciate that not everyone is in the position of not having to go and get a job during university. I'm going to focus on three main areas. Firstly, the Celtic Society, essentially the Scottish Culture Society at St Andrews. This is a society that focuses on Scottish country dancing and Scottish Gaelic language. Now, while I didn't do much Gaelic language while at Celtic Sock, I did spend five years as part of the society, five years on committee, three years of those as president, and in my final year I was teaching Scottish country dance classes. Celtic Sock, probably the biggest extracurricular thing I did at university. The second area is going to be academic representation and I'm specifically going to focus on my fourth year where I was the elected student school president for the School of Physics and Astronomy. And then my third area is going to be the university wind band where I played my tenor horn for all five years of my degree. Suffice to say I did a lot of things outside of my studies but how has this all helped me going forward? More importantly how has this helped me more than doing a little bit better academically in my degree. With the Celtic Society I spent five years interacting with dozens of students from across the university with different perspectives from different countries from different subject areas. This varied group of people became my friends. Compared to somebody who spent eight hours, ten hours, twelve hours a day studying, I have a really broad friend group from Celtic Society who have art historians, classicists, computer scientists, mathematicians, yes physicists as well, 
but so many different perspectives that I wouldn't get just staying within the School of Physics and doing a lot of work. And that was just the day-to-day -day society activities. Like I said, I spent five years on the committee. I learned how a society runs, how to chair meetings, how to work with a broader team with different perspectives, how to take an idea and turn it into something tangible. Perhaps the most important thing that I learned how to do at Celtic Sock was how to put on a big event, namely Highland Ball. This dancing event didn't come together overnight. It meant managing and trusting a committee to make sure things got done. It meant working with other dance teachers to make sure the classes were prepared for it and also that we had a programme. We had to work with university staff members to make sure the venue was all sorted. It meant putting together a dance book to celebrate 225 years of the university's oldest society. And it meant advertising it to enough people to get a hundred dancers from across Scotland, the United Kingdom and even further afield to come to St Andrews for a dance. We pulled it off but I don't think everyone would have managed it. None of the things I needed to know how to do to be able to put on Highland Ball with the Celtic Society I would have learned from spending a lot more time studying quantum mechanics or general relativity. Switching gears a bit, let's talk about academic representation, specifically my time as school president for the School of Physics and Astronomy. This is probably the area that is most directly applicable to my intended future career in academia. In running for and then serving as school president for physics and astronomy, I interacted with dozens if not hundreds of people from across the university students in physics and astronomy, staff members both in the school and then higher up in the university. I even had a one-to-one -one with the principal at one point. I learned how to manage an entire team of class reps, how to chair meetings with both student and staff reps, and how to work within a university system to understand how things happen, and more importantly, why a lot of the time things don't happen. So that now going forwards, I know how to affect positive change in whatever university I may go to in the future. All of these things I learned in a voluntary role, something I didn't have to do. Yes, being school president was related to my studies because I was in physics and astronomy, but not everyone gets involved in academic representation. A minority do, and it really sets you apart if you can say, I know how to do all of these things because it's something I've done before. And finally, the university wind band. I'm not going to go into detail about the benefits of playing music or the benefits of playing music communally in a band, an orchestra, a choir. All of the benefits there are incredibly well documented. I don't think I developed more skills in wind band than I would have had in high school, except possibly being able to transpose by sight a bit better. If anything, I played more technically difficult pieces in high school than I ever did at university. But that's not the point. Wind band was for me what a music group is for a lot of people around the world. It was a way to de-stress, to have less on my plate, to go and interact with people from across the university with different stresses, different things they're worrying about, different experiences of university to me, and just to be able to socialise. It was a place to relax, a place to vent occasionally, and usually a place to just have a bit of a laugh while we play music for a couple hours every week. It may not seem as tangibly beneficial as being school president or running Celtic Society, but it was vital. And I feel like that's one of the most important things that everyone needs at university, somewhere they can belong and somewhere that they can really get something out of that's more than just academic. And while academics are undoubtedly important, I hope that you can see that my experiences with Celtic Society as school president and in the wind band have really set me up for life beyond university, more so than just studying in my room for five years could have ever done. But let me be clear, I'm not saying that you shouldn't work hard in your studies. Ultimately, you will likely need a degree to continue on in whatever career path you have chosen. I'm just saying to remember that there's more to university and more to life than you'll find in books. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. If you enjoyed it, then please make sure that you hit that like button. And if you're new, hit subscribe and hit the bell icon. There are some really exciting things coming out over the next few weeks, but what I'm really excited to tell you about right now is that myself, along with my friend Kat from Cat Does Maths over on Twitch, are starting a podcast. There is an announcement video out on this already, but I felt I'll put it in at the end here in case you haven't seen that. We're launching the Unstable Fluid podcast. Episode one is out 
right now, it's an opportunity for myself and Kat to look into a variety of topics in physics and maths and to share our experiences navigating academia. The pilot episode is out on our Unstable Fluid podcast YouTube channel, link is in the description below, and the audio versions can be found wherever you get your podcasts. All that's left to say is thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoy our podcast. See ya!